This is Grocery Talks with Food Distribution Guys Richard Baker, where we provide food manufacturers with a greater understanding of Canada's grocery sector. And now, here's our host, Richard Baker. Hello, my name is Richard Baker, and I'm the president and founder of Food Distribution Guy. Welcome to our Grocery Talks podcast series. And today, I'm pleased to be joined by Ms. Charlotte Dinkoy, Fred, my business coach and president and founder of The Repositioning Expert. Welcome, Chala, and thank you for your time. I was in your wedding speech, mister. Yes, you were. <laughs> uh, could you please explain the history of The uh, Repositioning Expert? Sure. I, myself, was a generalist. When I worked for big corporations like Pepsi, Pizza Hut, Frito-Lay, and I had a dream of owning up my own business, after 18 years, I left the big corporations and I became just like kind of like what you were, a general marketing strategist. Like I was just, you know, everything for everyone. Yes. And then, you know, I was starving. I couldn't really get much clients. I was competing with tons of other strategists and I didn't really have a niche. And then I niched into niching, helping people fig figure out their niching. And that's where the repositioning expert name comes in. I reposition their niche. And then Richard, after I worked with you um, two years ago, I super niched into elevator pitches and then it took off even more. So the whole idea, and you're a testament to this, is yep. niching yep. works. Niching yep. is the way it to does. go and that, that's what it, I do. So for a small business, why is it important that they have a unique selling, pr selling proposition? Because it's so, so competitive out there. It's so noisy out there. And now with COVID, there's a reduced spend pool. And so it's even more competitive. And, you know, 86% of buyers, I don't know if you knew this, but they can't tell the difference between two suppliers. Because mm, yes. that's why, yeah, they just shop on price. Correct. So that's why it's, it's just critical that whatever you're doing is different. So how do you help them? So like, I know you help me, but how do you help them identify what, what makes them unique? Because that is very difficult for someone starting out to really understand, you know, yeah, how I am, how do I make myself unique? And I imagine the people that are watching us are food manufacturers, right? Small food manufacturers. Exactly. Correct. Yes. So, well, but, but, um, but it's, but having these things selling problems is important for any category or any business regardless. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, now, you know, now I work exclusively like business with businesses like yours that offer services and consulting services. But for 18 years, I marketed Pepsi, Pizza Hut, Frito-Lay. These were all consumer products and food manufacturing companies. And the way that we did it every year, I launched like seven, eight new products, line extensions. You're very well aware of how it works. And yes. every single one had to go on the same shelf and they all had to sell without cannibalizing the main brand. So the way that we did it is we did market research about what gaps in the market there were that we could position that one product in. And for your product, you need to figure out first who you want to target. And you have to get really specific about, um, you know, I like to, I, you know, from a B2B standpoint, I, I like to say uh, industries, but from a B2C, because you guys are selling food products, you have to look at interest groups. So is it the yoga mom that you're targeting? Is it the hockey player that you're targeting? Is it the, you know, the armchair athlete on the weekends like you and I are, right? Yes. Are, who, who are you targeting and what problem are you solving for them? And uh, you know this for, as a marketer that even Pepsi solved a problem of image, of belonging. Everything solves a problem and whatever problem you're solving for whatever community, you have to put that into your messaging. You have to put Correct. that on your packaging. You have to put that into your positioning. And you also mentioned you've just uh, launched a podcast to help businesses create their elevator pitch. Mm -hmm. So can you just tell us why is it so important to help an elevator pitch? Well, because huh, especially in this new world of COVID, I don't know if you've been to any online meetings like networking, but they're, they're fierce. You are in a room that it's called a breakout room in Zoom. So yes. you're thrown into a breakout room. You have like 10 minutes and five people and you have to explain what you do for a living. And then it shuts down, like it counts down, Zoom counts down and then shuts down and shoots you into another room. And then you wow. have to do it again. Yeah, it's crazy, Richard. It's crazy. Wow. Okay. Yeah, 
and then and then and then again and again and again it's just crazy so it was important to stand out in 30 seconds of, of conveying what you do concisely and in a way that grabs attention before it's even more important now the women that were talking about where they're from and their children and their childhood all got in they didn't get any they didn't get to do anything except right. the time and so, so what is so, the ideal length of such an elevator pitch so the formula i like is really simple it's who you help and what problem you solve and to there even you sharpen it you know yeah it's so simple right and and that's what we did with you if you remember yep. um we did okay food you know people who can't get into grocery stores who manufacture food like small food manufacturers the cookie lady the sauce lady whoever and they can't get into whole foods or loblaws or whoever it is and what you do is you help them do their marketing so that not only do they get listed but they stay listed because that's one of the biggest problems that's your elevator pitch correct and it's and it's um and it's also one to remember, for example, if you're just going up in an elevator and you just happen to be maybe in the, in the same elevator as the president of, uh, of law laws and you, you know, and, and, and how do you, and how, you know, and you've got, you've got all of probably 10 seconds to maybe make a, a pitch to him. That's going to make him remember you. And so you never know that maybe he'll come calling. That's right. Well, he's not your target. No, no, I understand. No, but, but yet, you know, but yet he could sure, help yeah. you. So it's so funny because I've been asked to prep some women to um, women business owners, about 10 of them for a pitch to uh, Procter and Gamble. And uh, they're being introduced by uh, women, you know, we connect international and I've been asked as a pitch expert to help prepare them. Yes. And so yeah, that's what we're doing. We're, we're preparing them. So like, we're like, I'm going to tell them everything I know about pitching. So can you provide us with an example of one of your greatest success stories? Success, success stories. <laughs> well, you're one of them. Oh, okay, thank you. Them. You went from, we were just talking about this. You went from zero people ringing the phone to at least 10. Right. And in the, in the first year, you had like five to seven new clients. So, right. well, so what is the best way for a small business who is looking to work with you? How is the best way for them to connect with you, Charla? Well, I mean, if you're a six, you know, I, because the, the kind of work that I do is really now for the six plus uh, figure clients. So six and seven figure B2B as service-based companies. If you own such a company, um, you can go ahead and schedule a call with me at repositioner.com slash schedule. And uh, you apply to speak. And if you qualify, we'll get to chat. And the whole application process is just to make sure that there's a fit between right. what I can offer you and what the needs are. Because the needs at a startup level are very different than the needs at a six plus figure um, model of a business and that's what i do is you can reach me i go on podcasts i go on i speak at these virtual conferences and uh, and i invite people who are six and seven plus figure b2b service based ceos to connect with me through there excellent well thank you again to charla dinkard for being our guest thanks charla thank you and if you're a food manufacturer seeking distribution in Canada's grocery sector, please visit our website, www.fooddistributionguidegui.com. Thanks again, Charlotte, for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.